Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Brittany. I know that I'm cutting it a bit close this year, but I still thought that it would be fun to do a chocolate Easter egg video. This is a simple enough technique that you still have time to make some before Easter comes. I will be making a ruby chocolate Easter egg decorated with gold leaf on the outside to keep it classy, but I will be showing you how to add a crunchy filling to the inside so that it's a lot more fun to break open and eat. So like I said, the outside will be molded with ruby chocolate and on the inside will be a milk chocolate cornflake crunch. Comment down below if you've ever had cornflakes in your chocolate before. <laughs> I remember the first time I tried this, I was in Germany and I thought that it would be really weird, but actually the cornflakes add the perfect flavor and crunch into milk chocolate. So let's get started. Here are the supplies that you'll need some Calibut Ruby Couverture chocolate, some Couverture milk chocolate. You can also use Ruby white or dark chocolate here, whichever you like best, a polycarbonate Easter egg mold in whatever size you want. And if you want your egg to stand up, you'll need a stand mold as well. I'll try to find these exact ones and link them down below. But for reference, my egg mold is a 150 millimeter egg. A couple chocolate scrapers and metal spatulas some cotton balls or a microfiber cloth for shining your mold, a crunchy filling. Like I said, I'm using cornflakes, but you can use really anything that you like that you can cut or break up into bits. A couple pieces of parchment paper, a sheet tray, some food safe gloves, a thermometer, a stick blender if you have one can be helpful for tempering. And for decoration, I'm using some edible gold leaf and to apply it, I'll use lemon extract and some paint brushes. So the first step is to quickly make sure my mold is clean. Uh, my molds are already clean. I just want to give them a little bit of a shine, buff them up with this clean microfiber towel. Um, you can also use a cotton ball. And if you have no stubborn water spots, really all you need to do is just wipe it like this really quick with a microfiber cloth and it will just make sure the surface is nice and shiny. If the surface is shiny, then your chocolate will also be shiny. Now I'll temper my ruby chocolate. Um, I don't have a set amount that I need, but I'm, I'm going to measure it for you guys just for so you have something to reference. The most important thing is whatever size egg you're doing, you want to be able to fill it ideally to the top of the mold. It just makes it easier. Running out of chocolate is irritating because <laughs> you go through the time and effort to temper it. So you don't want to have to run out while you're in the middle of things. So I'm just going to eyeball how much I think melted and tempered will fill both of these. I'm only making one egg today. I actually also have some scraps that I want to use. Okay, so right now we're at 21.3 ounces, which is basically a pound and like five ounces. So that should be good because I'm going to add more chocolate in. So now I'm going to temper this. I have a video on this. So if you need extra help, check that out in the card or description below. Essentially what I'm going to do is take some ruby chocolate and melt it in the microwave for 30 seconds at a time, stirring in between. I will stop heating it when it's mostly melted with just a few bits left. It should be around 42 degrees Celsius at that point. I will then stir it until it's completely smooth. And then to temper it, I will add about one third of the volume in seeds and blend those in to cool it down to around 29.5 degrees Celsius to work with. Thank you. 
All right, so I actually think, even though I measured that for you guys, I could have tempered a little bit more, but I think it will be fine. Um, I won't run out, but because I might use all of the chocolate on the eggs, I'm going to make the bases first. And they're super shallow, so to do this, you can, you can pipe the chocolate in, or you can use a spoon. And, oh man. <laughs> I was <laughs> trying not to make a mess. It's okay. Okay, so I want to fill. I want to fill it, but I don't want it to go over. So I'll tap it on the edge to level it. And I want to get in every corner. Might need a drop more, or it might be fine. It doesn't have to be completely perfect but it needs to be flat and level. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Just clean up the edges a tiny bit. One more little corner. And while I'm at it, I'm just gonna make two. Always nice to have an extra, you know, if anything goes wrong, so. Okay, now I, for now I'm just going to set these aside and they can just set up at room temperature, that's fine. So now it's time for the egg. I like to use a measuring cup to fill the eggs. Um, you can pour them straight in if you want. In fact, maybe I just will do that. <laughs> Cause now it's turning out to be easier to do that. See how I could have tempered just a little bit more, but it's, I'm actually, it's okay because Ruby kind of gets, it kind of changes color and gets thick as you work with it. So it's not great to have a ton of extra. So this will actually be perfect. So what you can do like me, if it's not full, you'll just tilt the mold like this so that the chocolate coats every edge and you're going to tap the side with your chocolate scraper to um, make all the air bubbles that are underneath rise to the top and have the chocolate settle in so the egg will be nice and smooth. Okay, I see lots of air bubbles, so that's good. Because my chocolate's not to the top, I'm going to just swirl it for a bit so the outer edge can start cooling down a little bit before I dump. Otherwise, the top two, uh, the top edges might be a little thin. And we don't want that. Because these are, you know, bigger shapes, it's nice to have the walls be a bit thicker. So that should be good though. Now I'm just going to flip it over onto my parchment. Just move this cup. I don't need it anymore. This mold's not the greatest because it's flat. It doesn't have a lip <laughs> to hold it. So it's kind of tough, but you'll tap the edge to knock out the excess. I'm doing a gentle tap because I don't want too much to come out yet until I check the thickness. I'm gonna check it now, scrape it before I flip it over. And that thickness looks really nice. So I'm going to stop here. What I'm going to do is now take a clean scraper, scrape it good one more time. Actually, I'm gonna go this way. It'll be a better scrape to do the egg separate like that. Okay. And now what actually helps with the eggs as they're setting is to grab another piece of parchment 
and carefully lay them flat like this. This will help the chocolate kind of even out in the shell and it will create just a small lip on each edge will actually, and that will actually help us glue the two sides together when it's time. So I'll let these begin setting up just like this while we temper the milk chocolate. To temper the milk chocolate, I will be using the microwave method, which is the easiest way for me. I have a video on that, so check it out in this card or in the description box below. All you do is take a portion of chocolate and heat it in a plastic bowl for 30 seconds at a time, stirring in between. You stop heating the chocolate when one half of it is liquid and then stir or blend it together until it's completely smooth. This will cool the chocolate down and encourage stable crystals to form. Now my milk chocolate is cooled down to the working temperature of between 30 to 31 degrees Celsius. Right now it's about 30 degrees. So I'm going to pour into this bowl as much as I'm thinking I will need to fill each side of the shell. And you know what? I might end up just using all of it. And if there's extra, that's just like a little treat. <laughs> so I didn't really have to move it, but <laughs> I guess you guys can see better in the glass bowl anyway. So this will be good. Okay. And now for this part, I need the corn flakes. Okay. Now, before I dump them in, I'm going to like crunch them like this in my hand. And kind of crunch them and stir them in like this. And I'm not measuring anything. I'm kind of just going by the look of it. And you can as well. You can have it more crunchy or less, just depending on your, your own preference. That was the timer for my temper test, but I can already see it's tempered, so <laughs> yeah. So you can see kind of how, um, how many bits are in there. I wanna crunch them up just a little bit. And my thinking is kind of, if you're putting crunchies in, you wanna have enough to really enjoy it. So I'm gonna add one more handful. Give that a stir. Okay. So this is what we've got. It's pretty crunchy in there, which is going to be great. Now, grab our eggshells and I'll show you what they look like. They've just been setting up at room temperature this whole time. Okay. So see how we have a little bit of a lip? This will be great. And if you touch them, if your chocolate's properly tempered, they should be matte and pretty much set up enough to add in the filling. Now, you can brush the filling in with a pastry brush, but to me, why dirty a pastry brush? <laughs> I'm going to use a glove because I like to be able to like feel how thick and it's just, to me, easier to move around. So I'm just going to put some in the bottom like this and then scrape it up the sides. Now, try not to get it too, like try not to get it over the lip of the egg because when you go to glue them together, it could end up showing through in the seam. So just keep in mind like, just kind of leave a little bit of a, a border. And if you accidentally slop some, you can always go back and clean it up like this with your glove. So I'm basically just adding a, a coating to all the edges. And because this is just for like a nice crunch to eat through, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want it to be generally even. 
and I have a little bit much in the bottom, so I'll just move it to the other shell and kind of try to spread this evenly around like that. And as you're moving it around and working with it, it'll start to set up, which will help it stay put on the outer, on the outer edges. So then if you have any milk chocolate on the edge, take a clean finger in your glove and just go around like this. That'll clean it up enough, okay? You can add more or less, just preference. So here's what they look like. Now at this point, I am going to actually have these set up in the fridge along with the bases so that we can pop them out of the molds. And to protect this from moisture, I'm just going to cover them with a sheet of plastic wrap and they'll probably take about 20 minutes to set up. We have a lot of extra, so what you can do is pour this out onto a piece of parchment paper like this. And because this has corn flakes, this will just be for eating. <laughs> you won't really be able to reuse this. And I'll just spread it as evenly as I can. And then later when it sets up, break it up into pieces for a little treat. So our chocolate should be all set up. Just take off the plastic and dump out the bases. They look good. This one has some scuffs on it, so it's good I made two. I'll use this one, the better one. And to take the eggs out, I should be able to just gently pull them like this should be nice and shiny. Set them on this parchment paper. Okay. Just like that. And how I'm going to glue the two sides together is with a hot, well, warm sheet tray. I've had it in the oven for maybe 10 minutes at 190 degrees, so I'll grab that now. So, I'm going to melt one side first. Need help to pick it up, you can use a metal spatula, that works really good. Set that there. Quickly do the second one. and put them together as quick as you can. Line them up with your fingers like this. And before they get too set up, I like to smooth the seam. And you wanna to try to be as clean as possible, but for this design, if you do happen to get some chocolate, you can cover it with gold leaf, <laughs> which is a nice part of this design. Okay, now once they're sealed together, you can glue it to the base two ways. You have a hot tray, so you can just melt the bottom and then stick it there, or you can use some extra chocolate and pipe it and hold it, but it could take a minute to set up, so I'm going to do the method where you melt the bottom if you happen to have any of this magic freeze spray, you can buy it basically from any chocolate place. Um, I'll link some below. This can be helpful to 
solidify your chocolate quick. So I'm just going to hold my egg straight up and down. Let it get a little bit melty here. And once you've got a good bit of melted chocolate, just carefully place it on the base. And hold it in position. Do your best to keep it even. It's setting up pretty good on its own, but you can give it a spray to speed up the process. And you've got your egg. Now I'll just finish it off by applying gold leaf and you can apply it wherever you want to, wherever you think looks good. I'm going to use um, lemon extract that just attracts gold leaf, makes it stick, and then I like to wait for it to dry and then pat it off with a nice big soft brush. Okay, so now that I'm, I've brushed some flat, I like, I'm not happy with the look at, of it. I kind of like the look of some of the gold leaf standing up. So I'm just going back in and adding a little bit more. I feel like it creates some more interesting dimension and layers. So that's what I'm doing. All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this simple yet elegant and tasty chocolate Easter egg idea. I also hope that you learned something new. If you did, please let me know by liking the video down below and leaving me a comment. It helps me out a lot. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, today's the day. If you'd like to see something else that's sweet, just click on one of these thumbnails. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you soon. Bye.